Then five, four, three, two, one, ignition. Yay. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, everyone. Well, welcome, the, the welcome. Audio is loading yet. So one, two, three. Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to another European Town Hall. Very glad to be back again, guys. How are you? Fine, fine. We How miss you? you very much. And you, Ricardo, how are you? Very good, very good. Traveling today, but yeah, uh, happy to be here. Awesome. Hello. A lot of Welcome travels in the, in the Cardano ecosystem, right? <laughs> Welcome, Logan. Welcome, Kavir. Welcome, Federico. Oh, Federico. How are you? What is up? How's it going, Maro? How are you? Everything's fine. Take care, guys, for Anonymous Anonymous, because maybe it could be a bot. So have that in mind. I don't know if, if you, Anonymous Anonymous, are there, but please. Yeah, not, not a bot, not a bot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for that. We just need to take a... Yeah, we had a bad experience so, in the past, indeed. Yes. <laughs> So welcome guys, welcome to another European Song Hall to know about what is happening in the Cardano ecosystem, to learn more about the projects. And David, next slide, please. Next slide, please. If you see, there is also available in IOG uh, YouTube channel, the video about the age of Volta, about the workshop of the C694, that we made in Edinburgh, Scotland. And next slide, please. Regarding that aspect, in this new Volter era, we are working about the governance of Cardano, and we introduced a new concept that we call MBC, Minimum Viable Constitution. So be update, keep update about all the news because we will need the help of everyone here and we are building a new governance for Kadani. So next slide, please. As always, our super mix mantra, we mix the language of all around Europe and the world, why not? So Davide, as always, you, the Italian one, open with the... Yes, benvenuti all'esperimento. Marcus? I'm still sorting my screens. Hi, guys. Hey, <laughs> Hello. The show's peu bon. <laughs> Ricardo. You're mute. Uh, are you mute, Ricardo? No. Sorry, quebra or fill in the documentation? Federico, please. Desorientar, sobrecargar, e inspirar. Well, well done. It was differed ampliamente in interacciones, but don't yeah. worry. So, Logan, can you do the last one? I can Our do goal. that. Dice rent, goal. overload, and inspire. Just as that. Yeah. Our goal, provide a safe and lively environment for you to explore the highest potential de la colaboración humana. Yay. Well done. Excellent. This mantra is always a mess, but it's super fun to, to try to catch exactly. all languages together. <laughs> so next slide, please. And regarding that aspect, we have our own mantra of the European Canadian community. So next slide. So remember to keep your notes up to date. And there's try a to new start... version out. And there's a new yeah. version out. So yeah. everybody can update. Um, as of now, it's been confirmed today, so do that. Okay, sorry for that, Marcus. I was sorry. not able to update there. <laughs> oh, I mean, <laughs> version, not sorry. version, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Next slide. Uh, we make Twitter space in different languages. And uh, Next slide, please. If you want to host a space in any language, just ask someone from the team. We are also have new slides for this. So keep we will keep update in the in the next town hall. Again, sorry for that. <laughs> and with this QR code, you can check all the social media and follow community. So you are welcome. Next slide. And today we have to introduce our first cast. 
the NUNET team with all the updates, with all the working. How are you guys? Very well, happy to be first. Hello, Kabir. Hello, Kabir. Thank you for joining us. Hey, man. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Hear you, yes. I had this problem the whole day. So, thanks. Happy to be first. And yeah, very well. <laughs> so, can I actually share the screen? Or? Yeah, uh, sure. Yes, I will stop sharing for the time being so that you can take over. Uh, yes. Do you see my... We do. We can see the screen, yeah. So I believe the topic would be our Project Catalyst Fontan proposals. Not as the main topic, or I will go to introduce a little bit what are we doing at Monad first. So basically, we are building a global economy of decentralized computing, which allows anyone to share, monetize their computing resources at scale and also on a small scale and big scale, and provides globally distributed and optimized computing power for the decentralized networks, including Cardano and including blockchains. So anything basically that needs computing power to source from whatever we are using now, AWS and other, other let's say, cloud computing uh, frameworks, we would like to offer an alternative to the basically community to use our own computing power or computing power, which is basically hidden under our tables and somewhere else in small businesses, to basically do that. And also we are uh, looking for the specific use cases which need decentralization inherently and specific use cases which actually cannot run without decentralization like the ones that need to be decentralized uh, geographically which is an interesting sort of uh, opportunity and we're building basically protocols and apis in order to enable just that for people to connect to the computers and offer the computing power in terms that they want to offer that and for people who want to use that to figure out whether they can use it in terms that they want to use. So that is, uh, NUNET is an open source platform for connecting those individually owned computer devices across the world into this, let's say, decentralized cloud. However, decentralized cloud meaning that it can be many, let's say, uh, virtual private networks, let's say, which will uh, organize themselves as they need to get organized. And it is freely accessible, or the way we're building it, uh, we're building it to be freely accessible to basic ecosystem of data providers, storage frameworks, AI developers, application developers, in, general, in that free space and basically in, in conventional space. And the kind of design, uh, uh, how to say it, design uh, principle is that we are aiming to use as much as possible technologies and uh, networks and basically platforms that are available to the system. So, and we are connecting them together rather than building some sort of uh, basic layer or something that uh, changes them. So the way we're working, we are doing the basic platform and protocols and APIs. However, we're also uh, building selected use cases, which are already geared towards the usage of the, of the initially, let's say, limited platform functionalities because we're building it. However, they already uh, make sense in, in, in real world usage. So this is more or less the intro. Now, as I said, we are building it as what we call it use case based platform development. So we are building the platform features according to our long term roadmap, but we immediately try to find what kind of uh, usages we can sort of identify now in the ecosystem and to try to build those specific features for those usages. This is what we call use cases, use cases. And this is actually relates to our Catalyst, Catalyst uh, projects because we kind of structure Catalyst projects based on that. 
and which means we are prioritizing technical technical features that were built into the platform based on what kind of partners and what kind of usages we already can identify in the ecosystem. So just before the before the fund ten, we already have two projects uh, which we submitted, uh, which were uh, awarded uh, funding from fund seven and fund eight. So the first one was we are building decentralized SPO computing, which allows to run SPO nodes on the decentralized network. On Lunet network, this one is, is not finished uh, because we basically figured out that we have to implement quite advanced um, features on the platform in order to make that happen. Therefore, we are, we are sort of continuing building that and also continuing building the features in the platform for that. Another project that was awarded uh, Catalyst Fund 8 uh, funding uh, is decentralized GPU machine learning cloud, where we started to build ability for GPU resources scattered around the world to be used for the machine learning by collecting them into single cloud and enabling users, which will use that, let's say, to train bigger or small machine learning models and to reward computer owners for that. So that is that was supported by Catalyst Fund 8, and it is finished now and it's running on our testnet. And we're looking forward now for the next stage to implement this on the mainnet. Now, I will not start to explain the, the basic architecture, but it's pretty much explains how we are building things with the APIs and protocols and interaction between all the components and all the, let's say, uh, what we call. Uh, yeah, framework provide compute providers, data providers, and et cetera, and so forth, which may be third parties rather than Luna itself. So we are really very much uh, into the collaboration, technical and otherwise with the community as broad as possible. Now to the Catalyst Fund 10, we are participating in seven projects, more or less, let's say, Actually, we are participating in more than that, but we are participating some, in some projects either as proposers or as partners in these proposals. We also know that there are some projects which are using our NUNET as a technology underlining, but we are basically not participating there yeah, ourselves, or at least uh, formally. So the first one, so the, we basically we have these seven projects are kind of broke let's say in three categories. One is that we are building core platform features for NUNET, uh, in NUNET platform, then use cases, which I, which I explained. And these, are, these two things are related. And then we are co-proposers in, in, in one proposal. So first of all, in terms of the core platform features, we are proposing a proposal for NUNET for decentralized GPU clusters, which is research and proof of concept for building pretty much virtual GPU cluster combined from the yeah, GPUs scattered around the world and connected by the internet. And that is very much research as, as it's written uh, because yeah, there is no established technology how to do how to do this. However, it is very much um, potential. I mean, it has huge potential. If we build this, this will allow us to train large language models on without using, let's say, uh, big cloud providers, which cost tens of millions of dollars to train uh, large language model, or basically uh, current AI, let's say, AI models. And that will enable to decentralize AI in general, which is a very uh, interesting prospect for the, for the, for the ecosystem. Uh, another one, which is also related to our uh, the, the current, let's say, uh, implementation of uh, machine learning on, on single GPU, which is decentralized GPU splitting on software level, which is pretty much this, trying to achieve the same, trying to achieve uh, ability to build, to train large language models on decentralized GPU hardware, which kind of, of course, it needs also other, other resources. But uh, rather than uh, trying to cluster all the GPUs on the kind of virtualization level, it's uh, the approach is splitting on algorithmic level, splitting uh, training into different, let's say, into uh, yeah, decentralized it on uh, into different GPUs, figuring out the, how different sort of single GPUs or maybe uh, mining rigs 
can provide part of the job and then combining it in a single model. Uh, so that is related to basically machine learning and AI. Uh, the next one is, uh, the third one is enabling Elasticsearch clusters on decentralized hardware, which is basically, uh, again, APIs and protocols, which will enable us to host mainstream databases. First of all, we, we are gearing towards Elasticsearch uh, database, and this is done with uh, our partners, IMX, which actually uses Elasticsearch databases and clusters in order to, to do the, the pretty much Cardano blockchain indexing in the way that is needed for their own um, business model. So we want to build this use case and enable for the whole community to use Elasticsearch clusters for that project. However, the longer term, this is why it's core platform feature is that it will enable mainstream databases to be hosted on Moonet and to be accessed by Moonet, which is again, isn't just needed for the for building applications. And application developers is one of our target, let's say community or target customers, let's say this way. Now, a uh, fourth project that we proposed for the consideration for the Catalyst Fund 10 is uh, build uh, sort of building infrastructure for decentralized identifiers for components in the each component on Moonet ecosystem so that each machine, each user, each algorithm, and basically each data source can have a DID and be identified with DID. And then it can be KYC if it has needed. We also do this with our partners IMX. Did I hear something? Now we have two use case based uh, proposals that were offered for the, for the front end, which is bioinformatics simulation with, uh, with decentralized computing, allowing to run large scale bioinformatics simulations on Moonet, which is also related to all these um, projects and our current implementation of GPU. GPU machine learning on, 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 on Moonet as uh, six is running open source chat GPT alternatives again on, on Moonet network using the decentralized mostly GPUs and connecting them into, into single cloud. And last but not least, uh, we are partnering with uh, Argus NFT for providing machine learning powered NFT recommendation API trained on Moonet network and Argus NFT is building this basically recommendation uh, engine and API. And we are partnering for them to use Moonet network online and let's say real time in order to, 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 to train all those, those models that they're training and also to update them in order for the community to, yeah, uh, to access it. So that would be a short kind of explanation of the, of the what, uh, uh, what is our participation in the, yeah, uh, Cardano Catalyst Fountain. So I wonder how much time did I save? You're perfectly in time. Thank you very much. Um... Mauro. Yes, thank you. Thanks, Kabi, uh, to be here to present today. This maybe will be a rough question, but you can always say, I don't know, or I, it's not related to my area, that kind of things. We respect that. But there is, has some questions about how the current collaboration with Singularity will affect it, the development of that proposal. You are receiving fun of them or how it's gonna go. You always can say, I don't know, or maybe that funds will be related to another development. It's just a question that someone said uh, in, the, in the community. And I always like that people have the opportunity to answer those questions. And we respect if you don't know or if not related with your area. So just that. Uh, probably, well, can you specify the question? I believe singularity means singularity net. Yes. Uh, uh, it's a current collaboration between Nunet and singularity. 
And we would like to know if that collaboration is regarding of the development of one of those projects or is for another things. So, is yes. Okay, so uh, Lunat is a spin off of Singularity Net. We did basically just, just to, to, to explain the history. The, basically, Lunat as a project was incubated in, uh, within Singularity Net, and we did the spin off in the uh, end of 2021, which means we, we did the crowdfunding well, through crypto markets on Lunat. So, right, right now, we are completely self funded, and all the projects we are doing, like I said, we have a team of now 30 people. Plus, or plus minus, so we are kind of increasing all the time. And so all those projects are not, yeah, apart from what I said, they're not related. However, we are, so what we're looking for, we're looking for integration to Singularity Net platform in order to be able to ingest the algorithms from Singularity Net platform. And however, number two, quite early in the process when we were designing, even in the incubation period, when we were designing the platform, we made sure that we have different, let's say Singularity Net is not the only algorithm provider. We have different options. So, and we're looking for, right now, basically we're doing it ourselves and we're looking for the partners who can maybe, I mean, provide that. Basically we're using containerization technologies. If that answers the question. So from the business side, we are spin off, we are spin off like almost two, two years ago. Now we are completely independent. We're looking to use the technologies that are being built in the ecosystem, both inside the Singularity Net ecosystem, and now we are kind of stepping in or already stepped in into the Cardano ecosystem. So we're looking forward to that. Yeah. Does that answer the question? Thank you. Thank you for, for yes. Uh, thank you for answer. I, I always love that projects and brands and people has the opportunity to answer those questions because you know in social media uh, is always some question like that but all sometimes bring that question into the conversation and have a, an official answer is always good so thank you for taking the bullets there and yes Ricardo yeah First of all, thank you, Kabir, uh, for the comprehensive and, and short presentation of all the different proposals. Um, I have a question regarding the, let's say, in the best case for you from uh, NewNet, uh, you would get funding basically for all of them. Um, the question would be, I understand the, the team has grown uh, to about uh, 30 developers, right? Um, would it be still, let's say, uh, on, on the limit uh, of the organization can cope with uh, or are you planning to grow uh, with the funding maybe you can say some words about you know that the business situation basically yes so we are planning to grow and and the, the, this use case based platform development model which we started pretty much from the very beginning is that yes we have we have the let's say core funding for building core platform however immediately we started to build projects and we started to structure those projects both financially and from the project management side so that it's not that we are let's say spending our let's say this amount that we raised and then when we we, we finish that then we think okay what to do with what to do now however we are trying to kind of build also this project pipelines where we have also set an amount of of of, of funding coming from either either funds or maybe partnerships with with basically other ecosystem members and then, but we always have this sort of base funding that we can cover in order to complete our commitment. Yeah. So this is something that actually we bring in that if we do not, if we miss with the budget or whatever, or there are all kinds of things, which actually happened before, we are committing to finish those projects with our funding, which we, yeah, which we have. Great. And final question from my side would be in, in terms of interoperability, um, what is uh, the plan for the next two, three years uh, from unit perspective? So which are the main chains you're planning to collaborate with? Uh, interoperability with chains, right? Yeah. So back to the history, we started our first MVP was on Solidity. Now we pivoted to Cardano and we do not really, because the way we are building it, we are building APIs which have abstraction layer, 
And then based on those APIs, we figure out, okay, which blockchain, because blo we use blockchain for settling uh, contracts between machines or components in the system, and then settling the transactions, which was agreed. So it's a specific uh, specific functionality in the platform, in the, yeah, in the network. Other functionalities are just peer-to-peer -peer network, mm -hmm. which is basically off-chain. So okay. it's not that we use it. And so right now we selected Cardano for the, for the public alpha, or the first mainnet implementation. And actually we do not have other plans. It depends on what, what comes and what kind of developments both in the blockchain ecosystem and also what, what uh, partners do we find or what kind of use cases we need to implement because different use cases may need different things. Some use cases may need just blazing speed and no smart contracts and we may go to certain, uh, let's say, implementations of blockchains. It's not exactly blockchains, which will allow that. So, okay. yeah, so right now we are basically building the main smart contract is on Cardano. However, again, we define it let's say above blockchain. We define functionalities, which is not blockchain. Agnostic. Which are basically blockchain agnostic so that we can implement them on other blockchains. Thank you. Okay. Mauro, I think uh, we can continue then. Okay, David, can you share the screen? Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank of you. Of course. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Kabir. And now, well, we want to welcome the team of Genius Geo to introduce their proposals. Hello, Marvin. For those who doesn't know, I met Marvin in Buenos Aires Hackathon 2022 with Lars. Yes. How are you? Yes, it's a good time. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Yeah, thank you for having me. Please, it's your time. So go on. Okay, I'm going to share the screen. Here, can you see? Yeah, we can see the screen. Yes, so today we're going to go over Genius Yield um, Catalyst proposal. Uh, so for those that are not familiar with Genius Yield, we are a um, a next generation DEX. We're focusing on building a DEX based on an order book. And we believe that the order book architecture is really the best, um, best match for UTXO architecture of Cardano. Uh, and it allows you to uh, create really advanced order types. Um, and that's really where we want to focus and bring that innovation into Cardano. So advanced order types are things like options or limit orders, uh, margin trading, stop loss, a lot of the more advanced trading experience that people are familiar with um, on the on traditional finance. Um, and with that, so we, 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 we put together three proposals, which I'm, I'm really excited about. Um, so I'll go briefly over them and then we'll, we'll dive a bit deeper. So the first one is around options trading. So options trading options are a de derivative instrument, right? They clear key role in traditional finance and they allow you to leverage, make leverage calls, uh, but also hedge against your position. Um, the second one is around what we call a cross dex uh, order aggregator. Um, so, you know, it's great to have, you know, multiple dexes across Cardano. Um, but what it does is that it fragments the liquidity a little bit, right? And the, the power of, of exchanges is, the, the power of also the volume of liquidity, right? When you have large volume of liquidity, you have low slippage, you have a better, uh, less arbitrage and a better capital efficiency. Um, and so we are building a kind of a, um, so internally we use what we call the smart order router that kind of routes orders together within our DEX. And so we're extending it to be able to route orders from different DEXs so that you can have your most efficient uh, trade most of this on swap happening and kind of uh, reduce kind of like the difference in prices uh, between DEXs. And lastly, we have Atlas 2.0. So uh, Atlas 1.0 is already live and it's been used on the hood uh, at Genius Yield, but also by other projects. Uh, it's fully open source. So this is our own PAB or Bluetooth application solution uh, for Cardano. 
Um, so this is uh, kind of what Genius Shield built internally uh, is a, a, a pub is used for uh, building transactions, uh, querying the blockchain and doing coin selections, interacting with the smart contracts. Um, and it's kind of like the, the core basic building block of, of any dApp. Um, and so we use these for all our products at Genius Yield, at Genius X, so the Launchpad, the staking platform, and the DEX. Um, and in these proposals, we are kind of expanding the scope of Atlas and introducing more and more advanced features. So let me move to options. So uh, here, options is, um, like I said, these are uh, derivative instruments. They allow you to leverage and get higher upside, also hedge against your loss. Um, a way to think about options is basically um, a promise to buy or sell a token at a specific price uh, at a specific time in the future. Um, and so, for example, imagine you 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 buy an option that allows you to buy ADA at uh, well, like yeah, buy ADA at like one dollar in three months. Um, but then in three months, the price of ADA is two, two, two uh, is two. Then now you have an arbitrage, right? You can buy at one and you can sell it at two. Um, and so now you 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 that bet kind of panned out and you you are in the money. Um, and you can do that same thing for for selling. So these are very powerful ways for people that understand how the market works and have a good intuition on on how token prices are going to move. They kind of make those bets, you know, ahead of time and main those options and then and then other people can trade them. So the way we're going to handle this here at Genius Seal is we're going to create a second platform that will allow you to mint uh, the option. The option will then lock in the parameters of, uh, of the option. So the strike price, the token uh, pair that, that are being traded, uh, the expiry date, um, and then you have to put, a, put in a deposit. And then these will mint tokens that will then be tradable on, on our Genius Seal platform. Um, and so then you can then trade your options as if you're trading regular tokens. Uh, the premium price will be set by the user. Um, and then whoever ends up with the options by the expiry date can then exercise them. Um, and so we've done some deep research around uh, how to make this possible. Uh, we really leverage uh, our order book architecture. Um, I don't think you can do that, that kind of options uh, on an AMM or, or uh, kind of architecture or, or a DEX that is more like using pools like MinSwap. Um, so this is really leveraging kind of the power of, of the architecture that we choose, uh, which is the order book. Um, and so we you can look at the proposal. We go in, in details around the architecture of the, uh, of the smart contracts and how we, we, we we've we're very well planned how we're going to build that, that contract for options to function as closely as possible to the real world. The only thing that we change from options in the real world is that traditionally options can be can only be bought in batches. So you can buy you know, a batch of 100 options. Um, in our case, we thought that was actually a, a, an artifact, right? It's a legacy of the old system when people used to give out options in paper form. Um, and so our options are actually uh, fractionalizable. So when you mint options, you can then fractionalize them into individual units and then sell them on an individual basis, which then is the opportunity for Web3 to not just bring you know, good ideas from traditional finance, but also improve on top of them. Um, this is kind of like a, 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 um, a view of how that option platform will look like. Uh, this is where you'll be able to, so by writing options, I mean, you can create new options, you set the deposit, you set all your terms, and then you can see also the options that you own. Um, and you can see here the deposit, the amount, the price, and then the time at which it, it expires. Um, and so when an option is expired, you can then execute them and basically get the tokens at the price that you, that you want. And, and then, then with that, you can sell them instantly if you feel like you have an arbitrage opportunity. Okay, moving on to the cross-dex aggregator. So like I said, um, 
the query can be fragmented across uh, across protocols. Uh, it leads to capital inefficiency. It leads to high volatility, and there's a lot of like arbitrage opportunity that are not being leveraged. And so at the core, this is we already have the MVP for for this one. We because we use what we call our smart order router framework internally uh, for our own decks. The way it works, it's a, it's a bot that will scan all the buy orders of a token or the sell order of the token, look at all the prices and then see where they overlap and where there's an arbitrage. Um, and where we innovate here is most other DEXs will have a batch of fee, you know, or a scooper fee of two ADA to, 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 that you the user have to pay to match those orders. Uh, we don't have that fee, right? So the only thing that the user pays is the price of the transaction to match. So it's, it's very minimal, uh, but then it's up to the bot, the smart order router to make their own money, right? So they need to be incentivized to arbitrage. So at the core, they are an arbitrage bot. They're looking for inefficiency in the market and trying to, to reduce that gap. Um, and so in a way it makes our decks cheaper, but also it's incentive, incentivized smart order routers to find the best opportunity to make money um, bringing more efficiency, uh, more capital efficiency. And this smart order router will be open source to the public, right? So it's not just Genius Shield running it. It could be anyone that runs it. And that means they can update the code, right? So we'll give them a basic matching strategy, um, but they'll have the freedom to be like, hey, I can, I'm, I'm, I can think of a better matching strategy or I have, a, I, have I want to kind of tweak or update how the bot is matching those orders and submitting them. And so then the community will kind of create this kind of a decentralized competition where people will update the bot however they want and, and create their, come up with their own strategies. Um, and so that will, that will be possible for the Genius TL DEX, but also we want to extend it to these proposals to other DEXs. Well, now you can link tokens from different DEXs and do like multiple hops um, to find the best opportunity. And you can see how people can get really creative and the, 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 the side effect of people being profit incentivized, what happens is that it actually uh, naturally will bring the prices of, of all DEXs to be the same, right? And that's what you want. You want when you go from one DEX to the other that there's not big changing in price. And the reason there is a change in price is because it's hard to do that kind of arbitrage right now. And there's no like easy framework. I'm sure some people have figured it out to do it by themselves, but uh, we want to try to kind of create that platform that makes it easier for a lot more people to do it. And then lastly, we have Atlas 2.0. So this is more a core, core piece of infrastructure, right? This is where, like I was saying, it, you do coin selections from the UTXOs, you build the transactions, uh, you interact with the smart contracts. Um, and this is fully open source. You can see every week, you know, Genius Yield and others, I know M Labs and Plank are also users of Atlas. These are all like dev shops that help just actually build Atlas uh, from the ground up. Um, and so it's being used to power other projects across Cardano. So you may be using right now, you know, a, an app on, on Cardano that is using Atlas under the hood. An, another popular path is example like Lucid. Lucid is also a, a known one, Lucid and Mesh. These are more TypeScript solutions. Um, the, the disadvantage with TypeScript solution is that they don't have this uh, native uh, interfacing capability with uh, with Pudus contracts because they're in Haskell and a lot of the types right are in Haskell. So there's a bit more like bandage glue that needs to happen there. Was Atlas being Haskell native, um, it it it, um, it, it uh, interfaced really well with Pudus and it was to like really. Um, uh, integrate the types and the errors, error types really well. And so in this proposal, we're introducing a lot of new uh, integrations. So we're introducing uh, support for metadata, uh, support for native scripts, which are used for like multi-sigs. Uh, we are incorporating support for SIP57, which is around uh, creating co contract blueprints. I think these are very powerful to create some kind of standardized interface of how to how to uh, define contracts. Uh, this will allow people to build a lot of like DSLs and bindings for different languages for these contracts. Um, 
we're also looking at like uh, UT UTXO caching. Um, so uh, often when you build a transaction and and your the UTXO that you use may be pending on chain for a couple of seconds, maybe up to like you know a minute. Um, and so you need to kind of cache your UTXO to kind of avoid them. You avoid using those UTXOs again in the next transaction. Um, so I don't know if you've noticed, but in some applications, when you submit two transactions back to back, the second transactions usually fail. And so you have to wait, you know, maybe a minute to submit that second transaction. And that's because um, that app or that wallet is not doing UTX or caching. So these are a lot of low level optimizations. Another cool thing we're looking at is parallel transactions. So um, improving the way we build parallel transactions. So within a block, you can submit um, a lot of transactions in parallel that don't overlap. And you also, we're also working on uh, transaction chaining. So that's where you create a chain of transactions that consumes the output of the previous transactions. And you can, can bundle that all into one block so that those transactions get processed all at the same time. So yeah, a lot of cool things that we want to push to. And, and, and so that would be uh, why we call it 2.0. It's just an extension of, of this platform. And I invite you to check out the repo. Uh, you know, we're constantly improving that, that uh, Atlas on a regular basis. Um, and uh, yeah, the more people contribute, you know, the better it gets. And hopefully we can help other projects, you know, build that, their DAP uh, with Atlas. And yeah, that's, that's basically it. Any questions? Congratulations. So I don't know if anyone there has a question, but uh, can you send me your ways to contact you, please, Marvin? Yes, yes, you your personal. I'll send you, yeah, my email or Telegram up to you. Thank you. Just to catch up a little bit after the town hall. I don't know if anyone has a question. Yeah, thank you, Marvin. I, I would have a question. I mean, um, the DeFi um, space is exploding at the moment in, in the Cardano space. Uh, luckily, uh, we're really starting to see a lot of traction in different projects, etc. Um, I wanted to know, uh, with regards to the options solution, uh, where you see basically the unique selling point basically for the solution you are uh, you are planning uh, as compared maybe to some other products which are maybe going in the same direction uh yes yeah, so you're probably talking about mostly swap um i haven't looked deeply into the architecture uh i have people that have looked into it a little bit they told me that they have a, a different approach Mm -hmm. um, but I wouldn't know right now what are the pros and cons of the approach compared to ours. Okay. I just know that I think it's similar in concept, but in implementation, it's slightly different. Um, okay. I think we've thought very deeply about architecture and we think it's, it's really good. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I'm sorry, I cannot give maybe like a, a direct comparison right now. No problem. And the second question would be um, regarding also the options. Um, so from traditional centralized exchanges, um, the topic of leverage uh, in combination with options uh, is basically uh, yeah, something which is used uh, in combination. Um, do you also foresee that there would be, uh, let's say, uh, leverage uh, options uh, um, uh, in trading uh, in the platform or would it be something that uh, would be out of scope for the moment? So leverage options, I'm not familiar with that. Would that be like taking, it's like a margin trades with exactly. options? Exactly, taking margin margin trades. Yeah, so we haven't, so yeah, that's out of the scope, but I can see that being a thing. So the nice thing with Cardano is the, the contracts are, are, are can be well composed together, right? So you, you can really compose contracts together. For margin trading, we basically need to, we need a loan, right? So we would need to- Collateral. Um, partner with the lending lending protocol, right? Like yeah. liquid. So it would be kind of within the order, take a liquid loan, right? And then trade with the with the results and maybe even buy an option. So I think there are cool integrations that we can do there, uh, but I don't think we would create a lending protocol. We would just partner with the lending protocol to make that possible. Understood. Thank you very much. Very interesting presentation uh, and also proposals out there. Thank you, Mara. 
Yeah, you're welcome. Hi, Marvin. I also have a question regarding your options desk specs. And so I actually read through the proposal and had a question regarding the call option. So in the proposal, you write that you have a deposit token and then you also have a payment token. And let's say I, as an option seller, would like to sell um, an option contract where the underlying token is ADA. So the underlying asset is ADA and the strike price would be set to $1. That means, I mean, $1 for ADA. And do I understand correctly that the payment token is uh, not only required to pay the premium for the option, but also when you want to redeem or exercise the option, you also use the, for example, IUSD. Uh, I mean, in the proposal, you use, you use the token OCME, but um, I think the ideal use case would be the underlying as ADA and the payment token as a stable coin. Yeah, can you maybe elaborate a bit more because the terminology that is used um, usually is underlying asset and strike price, but I saw a little bit of a different terminology in the in the proposal. Uh, okay, yes. So I think terminology sometimes can get a bit confusing. We try to actually when we design when we when we're designing this initial contract, we tried to move away from terminology because we realized it was adding more complexity um, and could be simplified. So for example, like a put or call option are actually not two different options. They're actually the same option. It's just you switch the order of, of the token pair. And so we realized that you can significantly simplify the um, the code uh, by, by doing so. So um, I, I'm not an expert in like the terminology. I just know how it works uh, currently. So the way it works is, like you said, you, you, you deposit uh, a, a token in, when, when you create that option. And um, you're then in the future are allowed to buy those this deposit uh, using the other token, right, at the price defined. And so that's fixed, right? So that token deposited could be, you know, ADA or USDT or whatever you want. Uh, but then the, the price tells you how you can buy this token with, with which other crude asset. And then when you have that option, um, then you can, you can, um, uh, sell it right so you can set the premium and go to a dex and then say hey i want to sell it for this amount um and the premium amount that's based on the user can choose whatever they want right so it's like a um, they decide what they want to uh, sell it at and then uh, the market will decide right is that premium fair or not um once you buy that option uh, then it's yours and the only way to redeem it is to then um uh wait for it to expire and then uh, do that trade. I was saying like basically buy that deposit at the price uh, with the token that is defined in the auction. Okay, okay, I think now I get it. I mean, it's a very elegant approach because you could basically use any token pair A and B as one an underlying asset or as you, as you call it a deposit token. And the other asset could be a payment token. And also a question regarding the issuance of the option contracts itself. So, I mean, there is a there is a diagram in the proposal. And there, if I understand correctly, for example, if I want to sell uh, a call option uh, where the underlying is ADA, for example, I say um, one USD, I USD for one ADA, I sell uh, 100 contracts, I deposit 100 ADA in the call option contract, and then I will get the option um, token minted. And in a second step, I can do whatever I want with this option token. Um, but I, I was wondering, what if there is no buyer for this option contract? Usually in traditional finance, you only sell to open 
an option if there's also a buyer. And here I see the issue that you could sell to open a call option, but in a second step, uh, you have to sell the option as well. And this could be an issue because let's say um, I write this call option with the underlying ADA and then nobody wants to buy it. And if the expiration date is only in two months and uh, then I would have to wait uh, until two months that I can get my ADA back, even though nobody um, paid me the premium. So I'm, I'm not sure if, if you got the question because it's like a two-step process. First mm -hmm. minting, and then I can basically, the premium I can collect in whatever currency I want, which is, which is very elegant because um, I would assume that most people would want to pay the premium in ADA or in stable coins. And maybe you're familiar with Dopex is, is a decentralized option exchange on Ethereum. And there usually you pay the premium in Ethereum and they convert it um, for themselves. So the question is basically what about the two-step process of minting and uh, selling? Because I would like to only mint um, if I can sell, if there is a buyer. So yeah, that's basically the question. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't see that as an issue. So, you know, I was saying earlier how contracts need to be composable. So you don't want to create, what happened to EVM is everything's a monolith, right? So it's just one huge contract and you can't really kind of combine them together. Uh, here in our case, um, minting the, the options is just one contract, right? And trading, trading the option is just the DEX, right? It, we don't need to introduce new functionalities. Um, so when you mint the, the, the options, you have full custody, right? Like literally the option tokens are in your wallet. You can even give them to your friends, right? You can just say, hey, you don't even need to trade them on the DEX. You can say, I can send you some options tokens as a gift, right? And, and then they can take those options token and, and you know, exercise them in two months. So it, that's really kind of like the power of it is you have full custody. You can give them away. You can sell them. You can do whatever you want. And you could maybe people could build other creative protocols on top of it, right? You can maybe stake them, right? Um, so you can really, yes, you can see how having full custody of your option can create more uh, creative ways of, of, of leveraging those options for something else, right? They could be staked, they could be used for voting. I mean, who, who knows what people can come up with. Um, and and the, the premium is not set, is not fixed, right? So you set the premium after you've minted the token. So if, 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 your, if your option is not selling, it's maybe because the premium is not uh, set at the right price, right? So you may delist it and say, I'm, I'm updating the premium to a lower price. Um, and you'll need to update the premium anyway as you get closer to the expiry date. Um, if there's no buyer at all, then maybe your option was not a good option to begin with, or maybe you, you are in the market, maybe you're, you're, the option is a market that is very illiquid, but there's not that much supply and demand. And to me, that's not a problem of the contract. That's just a problem of the market, right? So if, 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 if you're trading in a market that has very few buyers and very few sellers and you can sell your option, um, that just means we need to bring more people into that, that, that market, right? That token pair. Um, but I don't know if that should be fixed with, um, with the contract. Um, and then, yeah, worker scenario, you have to wait. If you really can sell them, uh, you have to wait until they expire and then you get your, your tokens back. Okay, I mean, either you can wait until expiry or you can actually exercise the option yourself because you, you're actually the option holder. So, but that requires capital. So, um, okay, yeah. interesting. No, I actually really like the modular um, approach that you're taking. And I mean, it will, will generate lots of opportunities because I, I think in one interview with Frederick Gregor, the CEO of the Cardano Foundation, he actually mentioned that they are selling covered calls on their ADA. And I was, I was wondering, where are they doing that? Which venue, mm. which centralized venue, because it's not decentralized. Do you, do you know where they, are, where they are actually doing that? Have you, have you asked them? No, it's news to me. Uh, so no, I didn't know. Okay. Um, maybe last question regarding options. Will you also enable multi-legged strategies? For example, can I buy a long 
vertical um, spread, long call, or sell credit spreads, stuff like that. Will that also be enabled? So uh, that's out of the scope of this of this first proposal. Uh, we'll have to see how we can to integrate that later. So similar to Ricardo's question, we like the leverage trading. Um, as long as we build, you know, Lego pieces that can be extended and combined, right, modular enough to in combine with other types of uh, trades, uh, advanced orders, I think we can come up with a lot of creative things. Right now, we're kind of building the, the basic building blocks. All right, great for answer. Uh, thanks, thank you, and uh, thanks for answering my questions. Marvin, just uh, because I think there is a lot of curiosity about the whole topic, what is the preferred platform where you want the community to engage uh, and ask the questions and you will provide the answers? Is it like Discord or rather do it in idea scale? What is the, the preferred way? A good question. So if it's, I mean, I, I guess if it's specific to the proposal, let's do it on idea scale. Let's try to uh, so that other people can benefit from from these answers. Yep. Um, otherwise, we are always available for answering questions, like you say, on Discord or Telegram. Um, we can be we maybe a bit more reactive uh, on these channels, but if it's specific to the proposal, let's try to use at this ideal scale. Yes. Very good. Thank you. Okay, Mauro. I wanna I wanna invite you, Marvin, to uh, add your project Genius Yield to our Discord so that if there are European specific questions, maybe you find them in there. And if you are, which I know that you are very busy, um, then we could ping you and say, okay, there's somebody been asking you, if that is okay for you. Yeah, sure. Yeah, oh, I can also I can share my Discord. See you there. Your Discord, can be, can yeah. that same for you. I think, but I think uh, we already have a new net. Um, Project, do we have it? No, not yet. I don't remember. No. I think we have a specific channel uh, for yes, Global, but not yes. as a project. We can align with Jennifer or yeah. Cover. So just, just ping us and we'll provide anything else. Thank you. And maybe so one Marvin, last thing. Um, yes. I, I would love to come back another time. I have, I also work with this other project called Maestro, which is a, a Web3 infrastructure provider. And we have also a couple of a uh, proposals that I would love to share with you guys. If you if you want to have that quickly before the voting begins, you could also jump into a one on one session, um, because the next town hall or the next fireside chat, as it is called now, will only happen in two weeks. So um, we would reach out to you, I would say, and then we would organize a one on one. Um, same goes for everyone here in the call. So um, if you have something that you're proposing, just hit us up and we organize a one-on-one. -on -one. It will be shared on our YouTube. The session is around 15 to 20 minutes, and then you can pack it all in there and it's just your space. Great. Please, Marvin, send your email and Disco in the chat if you can. And also, Caviar, please. So thank you guys to be here. See you next time and have a wonderful day. Bye guys. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.